Hi, I'm Jeff Miller. I'm a geology undergraduate student at the University of Iowa, and today I'll be taking you on a tour of Iowa's Devonian Fossil Gorge. It's located just south of the Corval Lake Reservoir. Many fossils and geological structures can be seen within the gorge. This is the entry plaza. As you can see, there are six stone monoliths of 425 million year old Silurian Anamosa Dolomite with blue and green hexagonal tablets, which have interpretive information on Devonian life. Dating back to around 375 million years ago, this bedrock upon which you will stand was once a shallow tropical sea. Fossils of many extinct organisms can be seen. All of these animals existed long before the dinosaurs and were some of the earliest known on Earth. The Entry Plaza is a great place to start your tour of the gorge. On the right are Devonian limestone boulders taken from the Cedar Valley Formation in adjacent quarries and arranged in original stratigraphic succession. Limestone makes up much of the bedrock of eastern Iowa. The limestone of the gorge is from the Cedar Valley Formation within Iowa's stratigraphic record. This is the lower rapid biostrom layer. A biostrom is a layer in the rock record made completely from fossilized material. As you can see in this rock outcrop, there is a distinct layer made almost entirely from hexagonaria and favocytes tabulate corals. This biostrom is part of a coral reef that covers a vast area of the Midwest and is approximately 100 miles wide. As you can see when I zoom in on the layer, fossils of hexagonaria and favocytes corals can clearly be seen and many brachiopods can be seen as well. Now we will actually go down to the floor of the gorge to see other Devonian life forms and other geological features. This is a fracture in the limestone that has been filled with calcite crystals. This calcite is most likely an evaporite mineral deposit. Water containing dissolved calcite evaporated and left behind a solid calcite mineral deposit within the fracture. These are fossils of organisms from the second evolutionary fauna. Now an extinct type of coral that was once dominant during the Devonian, the coral shown here is a rugose coral, also called a horn coral because of its shape. They were either solitary or colonial coral specimens. In the picture shown, the coral's calyx can be seen. This is where the soft-bodied animal resided. Another animal that flourished during the Devonian was the crinoid. Not related to plants or corals, these animals lived upright, attached to the substrate, and fed off of particles suspended in the water column. Their bodies consist of a stem, calyx, and arms. Here is a crinoid specimen with the calyx visible on the right side of the stem. Within the calyx is the crinoid's mouth. When alive, it had arms attached to its calyx to bring food to its mouth. However, the arms are not visible within this specimen. Here are grooves in the limestone where we can tell tectonic activity took place in the past. The rock has been polished and scratched by rock on one side of a fault sliding up against the other. Shown here is a trilobite's tail. Trilobites are extinct arthropod predators which ate small animals on the seafloor. Trilobites were among the most successful of all early animals and flourished for 270 million years, but were nearly extinct by the end of the Devonian. Displayed here are a lot of colonial corals, which have been cemented to the floor of what once was a small cavern. The roof of the cavern collapsed. I want you to picture the sidewall to the left of the corals, and imagine a roof extending outward where the sidewall ends. This should give you a pretty good idea of what the cave must have looked like within our geological past. Shown here is a karstified surface. Karsts are areas of limestone where erosion creates caves like the ones shown. Groundwater dissolved the limestone in a process known as karstification. The roof of the cavern has since been eroded away, but imagine the slit-like cave, the flat roof, and that you are standing on the floor of the cave.
Again, walking through this section of the gorge, you can see how groundwater has changed the surface of the bedrock. You can see cracks and small caves on the surface of the rock due to the flow of groundwater. As you look north, you can see the stair-like pattern like the picture displays. This is due to the clay-rich basal rocks eroding at a faster rate than the limestone, and this is all driven by past groundwater movement. Shown here is a hexagonaria coral, perhaps the biggest fossil at the gorge, and they are very common in the bedrock along the Iowa River. They differ from rugos corals because they form large colonies. Just south of this is a large pothole-like karst. It just shows the power of groundwater erosion on the calcite-rich limestone. Here are many slabs of rock dipping upstream. Their dip shows the power and direction of the floodwaters of 08. Also displayed is a large slab of concrete, which was washed down with the destruction of the floods. These slabs are very heavy, and they make for a great example on how powerful the floodwaters must have been to erode the soil, exposing the gorge. Shown here is a mound of ancient river sediments. You can see the sand and gravel, which originally was deposited in an ancient river. Here is where a large fold is located within the gorge. It tells geologists about the previous stresses, which were placed on these rocks millions of years ago. The fractures are a great example of this stress. Also, this zone is very interesting because an ancient fault boundary can clearly be seen. The oval irregular shapes that you see are chert nodules. The chert replaces the limestone when the calcite is replaced with silica in a process known as diagenesis, a change in the physical and chemical properties of the sediment. There are many abundant fossils shown here at the end of the gorge. Mainly more brachiopods, crinoid stems, and rugose corals can be seen. This zone gives you a real well pictured image of how the Devonian seafloor must have been. So there you have it. The Devonian Fossil Gorge is a wonderful place to come see, and the sites are even better to see in person. I would highly recommend coming to see the gorge firsthand. It is a window into Iowa's geological past, and it's truly something positive that came out as a result of the floods of 2008 and 1993.